If an application is vulnerable to server-side request forgery, then an attacker could abuse the trust relationship between the web server and internal systems in a private network to get access to sensitive data and functions that are not directly accessible to remote users. For the purpose of this exercise, we use Web Security Academy Labs and this is the basic SSRF against another backend system from SSRF Lab series. You can find the link to this lab in the video description. To solve this lab, first we need to find the admin panel on an internal system in a private network address on port 8080 and then delete user callers. Let's begin by clicking on access the lab. We are now in the home page of the web application. I choose the product by clicking on view details. As we can see, there is check stock function at the bottom of the page. Make sure the burp intercept is on and then choose a city from drop down menu and click on check stock. Looking at the captured request in burp, we can see it contains stock API parameter and its value is a URL to an internal system to check the stock status. A right click on the request and choose send to intruder. Turn the intercept off and we go to intruder tab. We will configure Burp Intruder to scan the internal network to find the admin interface. So we need to define the payload position and payload sets. In the position tab for the attack type from the available options, we choose a sniper since we only have one set of payloads. Then in the payload positions, we need to define the location where payloads will be inserted. First I click on clear button to remove the positions that Burp has highlighted. Then we remove the current value of a stock API and replace it with private network address, the port number and the admin panel URL. Then we need to highlight the last octet of the IP address and click on add. This would be the position of the payloads in the request. After configuring the payload position, the next step is to configure the payload sets. So we go to the payloads tab. For payload type, I choose numbers from drop down menu. Then to configure the number range, I choose sequential for type and from 1 to 255 and the step would be 1. Looking at the payload count, we can see the number of the payloads that the current configuration will generate and the intruder will submit the same number of HTTP requests. Let's recap what we have done in intruder. First, we change the value of stock API to the private network address on port 8080 and the admin interface URL. Then we define the last octet of IP address for the payload position and define the payloads to be numbers from one to 255. Based on this configuration, Burp Intruder will scan all hosts within the internal network from 192.168.01 to 192.168.0255 on port 8080 to find the admin interface. Now that we have defined all required information, we can go ahead and click on start attack. Once the attack is completed, we check the result to see if Intruder has found the admin interface on any of the internal systems. The status column shows the HTTP response codes. We click on status to see if there is a successful server response. As we can see, there is only one entry with 200 HTTP response code. This should be the system that contains the admin panel. Looking at the request, we can see the IP address of the internal server. Then we go to the response tab and by inspecting HTML within the response, we can see that it contains the admin panel. Looking further down, we can also see user callers and the URL to delete this user. We'll copy this URL and go back to the web browser. In the product page, we click on check stock and capture the request in Burp. Replace the stock API value with the URL that we found from Intruder to delete user callers and then forward the request. In the web browser, we can see the message that the lab has been solved. Now let's check the admin interface on the internal server. Click on check stock again and in Burp, replace stock API value with the URL to the admin panel on the internal system and then forward the request. Looking at the bottom of the web page, we can see that the user callers no longer exist. In this lab, we saw how an attacker could exploit SSRF on a vulnerable web application to access admin panel on an internal system with the private IP address and perform sensitive actions 
such as deleting a user. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you in the next videos.